This is uh, another dimension because the handgun is concealable. It's a different conversation than just making rifles. All handguns will eventually be available for people to produce for themselves and to do in the privacy of their own homes. Gun control can never die because it lives in the hearts of men. <laughs> so no, gun control is not dead. It's undead. Gun control is undead. And uh, we just keep killing it, but uh, it just keeps coming back. In 2012, a then 25-year-old crypto anarchist named Cody Wilson started Defense Distributed, an organization devoted to removing the barriers from making firearms at home. The following year, Defense Distributed released the Liberator, the first 3D printed pistol. The Liberator is a simple, single-shot 380 caliber handgun. At the time, the replaceable barrels were only considered safe for one shot. Five years after the Liberator debut, the technological limitations of homemade firearms have started disappearing. The materials are cheaper and better, the machines are more precise, and the software is more advanced. It's a new reality that hasn't entirely filtered into public debates over gun control. It outstrips people's daily experience. They don't really understand what's taking place. This is a ghost gun. Because now it is very easy, right and completely Austin, legal, to make a firearm right in the comfort of your own home. The era in which the government can even hope to keep a fully functional firearm out of the hands of someone truly determined to get one is coming to an end. Now. I can ship gun machines that help you crank out 1911s in your kitchen all day long and no one has anything to say about it. Because what is there to say about it? By late 2014, Defense Distributed had raised enough capital to begin manufacturing the Ghost Gunner, a small machine that uses pre-coded commands to remove metal from unfinished firearm parts. Parts that when sold by a manufacturer are legally required to contain a serial number. What comes out of the Ghost Gunner is a key component of an untraceable yet fully functional metal firearm. In late 2017, Defense Distributed released files that allow the Ghost Gunner to mill out unfinished metal handgun frames. Wilson says the new focus on handguns is an important step towards the mainstreaming of home gun manufacturing. A lot of people living in an urban setting like DC wouldn't consider slinging an AR-15 on their back walking around the street, but they would at least think about whether they wanted to have a handgun concealed and made without anyone else's knowledge. While a 3D printer assembles objects out of layers of plastic or other materials, a milling machine like the Ghost Gunner does the opposite, carving a solid piece of material based on specifications spelled out in code. Defense Distributed sells the machine for just under $1,700. You can make a 1911 in your kitchen, naked in your bathtub if you want, and no one has to know about it. It's really cool. And that wasn't true last year, in the way that it's true now. Thanks to the internet, the newest generation of homemade gun designs are approaching the quality of store-bought firearms. My name's Darren Booth. Uh, I'm a uh, union carpenter. Started getting into 3D printing about 2014, and I was downloading different objects from the internet printing them out, and I wasn't very satisfied with the way they turned out, so I started getting into 3D design, and then that's when I heard about the Liberator. I like the Liberator, it's fine, you know, it's only good for one shot, so I thought, well, what can I do to make it a little better? This is the latest version, the uh, Shuddy AP9. I make them out of PLA plastic, but they hold up well. This, this very gun here has probably had over 5,000 rounds shot through. The digital files that are used to create guns using milling machines and 3D printers are written and shared online by hobbyist gun printers. Booth is a regular of the FOSCAD group, and the community worked together to create the digital files for the Shuddy. But it's an open community, it's an open chat, anybody can go on there and just ask questions. I watched some of these groups begin, like on my own websites, when I used to host forums and IRC channels and things. It's and it's great, like in our earliest days, I imagined that that would be what victory looked like. There would have to be communities taking up these projects on their own. It's an intellectual exercise. It, it helps you, you know, and just, it's fun to uh, come up with new ideas, exchange information. And this information exchange is at the core of the home manufactured gun movement. The 3D printed gun was never uh, its, itself. Uh, what we developed, what we shared online was not the gun, but it was the files that could create the gun. 
It's freeware for anybody who wants to build it. Hopefully somebody will make it even better. The Shuddy requires additional parts made by third parties, but those components can be freely ordered on the internet from unregulated vendors. Shoot a little low, a little low to the left. When the only thing you need to create a gun at home is a tiny digital file and a trip to the hardware store, gun control becomes impractical. It may also be impossible to outlaw the distribution of digital files used for handgun production. Wilson argues that an individual's right to create and distribute blueprints for a gun is protected by the First Amendment. Sharing that software was a, a political speech act, and the software itself, because it can be changed and evaluated and, and understood by humans, uh, the software itself is speech. So it's about fighting about that, that information, not about what the information can become. In 2013, the State Department forced Defense Distributed to remove the download links to the files for the Liberator claiming they violated the International Traffic and Arms Regulations, or ITAR. They saw these kids, you know, online being like, hey, not only no gun control, but, you know, we're going to destroy the whole concept because the Internet's going to serve guns. They were looking for a way to put their own power kind of over what we were doing. The closest thing they could come up with at the time was the ITAR. The ITAR is a set of regulations that govern what kind of military materials can leave the U.S. and go to other countries. The State Department and the Justice Department say, sharing this type of information, gun files, with American citizens on the internet is tantamount to exporting it to foreigners. And this somehow violates um, a foreign affairs power of the executive. Joined by the Second Amendment Foundation and the prominent appellate attorney Alan Gura, Wilson challenged the State Department's order. In spring of 2017, they petitioned the Supreme Court for a temporary injunction that would null the takedown order until their lawsuit was resolved. In January of 2018, the high court declined to hear the case, sending it back to a lower court in Texas to be argued on the merits. Yeah, we're going to win our case. And it doesn't mean that we have to win it in court. But, you know, we'll win it in the court of public opinion. And that doesn't mean that public opinion will agree with us. <laughs> in other words, the tools to build your own firearms are already in circulation. But Wilson is trying to win legal protections for future innovations in the space. Defense Distributed's focus on handguns is in part a legal strategy based on the 2008 Supreme Court case, District of Columbia versus Heller, that affirmed the right to own a handgun for self-defense. The handgun is at the, the center of what is protected in the Heller decision, as everything's understood now. So whereas AR-15s may not ever be backed up by the Supreme Court, there's no way of getting around right now the protections that the Supreme Court gave to the handgun. Um, and so this is the core of the, the Second Amendment liberty as it's currently understood. Now deployable, downloadable, manipulatable. You can do it in your garage. And so it's a kind of temptation. It's an invitation to, uh, to discourse, if you will. Automated, off-the-books firearm technology is a reality. And there's nothing anyone can do to change that.